So, you want to make a pit stop? What's gotten into you? Wise decision. I made a quick assembly video you can watch to get an idea what you have to do. Just check the link in the description. I've also made a checklist of all the parts including where to get them from and all the details, so you can just skip this whole video. Link in the description. So, back to the parts. What you need first is one Prusa i3 Mark III S printer, with or without the multi-material unit, with or without the bare frame. I've only tested it with the bare frame so far, but it should work with the stock frame as well. You can also start with the Prusa Mark III printer and the Mark III S upgrade you can get from them. That comes with a brand new sensor, magnets and a small metal ball. Great upgrade! You need 6 6x13 strong neodymium magnets. You can probably get away with slightly shorter ones. One 60mm Noctua fan. The 3 pin version, not PVM, and make sure it's 5 volts. It comes with an extension cable which is not long enough, unfortunately. So find a long enough extension cable of at least 70 centimeters or 27 inches that fits. Has to be 3 pins, 4 pins won't work. If you can't find a long enough extension cable, you can solder one instead. For this you will need a soldering kit, extension wires or use the original fan wires, heat shrinking tube and heat gun or electric tape, and a wire stripper. I won't be covering soldering. Just understand that bad wiring can lead to fire. This is why the extension cable option is much easier if you can find one. I later found an easy alternative to the actual soldering and I will be covering it in the assembly guide. You'll need a heatsink for the motor. You can install it later if you don't have one right away. It should be about 40 by 40 mm and 11 mm tall. Slightly thicker might fit. Thermal paste is also needed for the heatsink. You can use ordinary thermal paste or even copper paste or similar. Anything to transfer the heat to the heatsink. You'll also need lots of screws. I've used sizes that are common in screw sets and I recommend that you get them as a set if possible. If not, get each size individually. I made this sheet you can print to help organize the screws if they don't come as a set. The sizes differ by at least 4mm to reduce confusion between similar sizes. Lots of square nuts. I love square nuts, but I only later learned that there are various thicknesses, so get a thinner ones under 2 mm. These thick ones won't fit. You'll also need 8 short M5 screws for the fan mount and fan grill. The fan comes with 4 screws which I used here and 4 rubber connectors which I wasn't able to easily mount. I used spare M5 screws from my Prusa Bear upgrade kit for a more industrial look. Some glue can be useful for the sensor magnets in case they decide to jump around. As for tools, you'll need a Phillips screwdriver, a 2.5mm allen key with ball end and another 2mm allen key. They all came with a printer. Another 3mm allen key if you're using the bare frame and optionally a multimeter to check the wiring. You'll also need 10 zip ties the smallest ones you can find, a small piece of filament and of course a bag of Haribos. Optionally get some IPA for cleaning, a PC4 M10 fitting required for the multi-material unit and your preferred grease. Lithium paste is a good option. If you want to reuse the little fan to cool down the board and drivers and are using the Zaribo Enzy box, you'll need a 2-pin connector or jumper wires and printed box fan cover and fan grill. And if you want to use Igus bearings, make sure to get at least 3 of them of the correct size along with the lithium based grease. They are self lubricating, but I find the grease helps a lot. And now to the printed part. I've organized them by scenario. You have the recommended ones for Mark 3S, recommended for Mark 3S with a multimaterial unit, a separate multimaterial unit upgrade in case you want to add that later, and if you want to mix and match parts or use your own supports, there's another folder with all the parts. If you're using the very revised x-axis instead of the stock one, get my version adapted for the pit stop, because the original revised x-axis won't work. I learned it the hard way. It alters the parts in ways that are incompatible with the stock extruder and therefore with pit stop. Those are separate files not included here, so check the link in the description to get them. 
Additional screws and hex nuts are required for this mod, not included in the pit stop bill of materials. I printed the extruder in ASA because it's a bit easier to print than ABS and has good temperature resistance. The shroud should be printed in ASA or ABS or better. It's almost identical to the original shroud, so you probably know it can soften or melt in certain circumstances. You can print with more parameters for stiffer parts. I print with 4 parameters and 25% infill. I also turn on detect thin walls for a narrower fan cover to let more air in and a more lightweight fan duct. This also makes the parts a bit more fragile though. The printed parts require high precision, so make sure your printer is calibrated, the bed is reasonably flat and leveled and the vertical rods are not tilted, otherwise you can end up with skewed printed parts and degraded extruder performance. If you only own one printer then I recommend printing everything twice, this way if something breaks you don't have to revert back to the original extruder just to print the broken part. Make sure all the parts are printed correctly and there are no significant visual defects. This is the bare minimum you'll need. And this is with extra accessories and tools. And that's all. Once you have all these ingredients, check my detailed assembly video. Until then, be awesome!